Hello, everybody. We just wanted to let you know there's a little problem with the audio in this episode that you're about to watch. We had some technical difficulties, and uh, yeah, so the audio is a little kind of fucked up. But the content's good, so we decided to run with it. Yep, so we tried to fix it as much as we could. The normalizing helped some, but I'm going to be kind of low. Randy's going to be kind of loud, so it's kind of the opposite. Our guest is going to be kind of loud. So. Yeah. So yeah, so it's still a good episode and uh, there's some great info here about horror movies and how to make them. So enjoy the episode. We're reviewing on this episode, the Cuatro Cinco Hoy de Nicaragua and talking to a uh, horror filmmaker. Absolutely. So it should be fun. Enjoy the episode. And welcome to episode 45 Cuatro Cinco. of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Luna, along with Randy Rankin, co-host extraordinaire. And I'm, you're my co-host, Brandon Luna. Exactly. Extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. Esquire. Pretty good. Yeah. No, badass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so today we are reviewing for the 45th episode, the, the Hoya de Nicaragua, Nicaragua Cuatro, Cuatro Cinco. Cinco. How appropriate. Isn't that cool? It is the it's their 45th anniversary. 45th anniversary cigar for Hoya de Nicaragua. And they did uh, 4,500 boxes, mm-hmm. 10 apiece. So that's 45,000 cigars. Mm-hmm. So the, that Cuatro Cinco thing is just all over the cigar. It is, yeah. It's ensconced in Cuatro Cinco. Exactly. Yep. So yep. this is a um, 6 by 54. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about a wrapper that's Nicaraguan and Jalapa. The binder is Nicaraguan and Jalapa. The filler, guess what it is? Nicaraguan Esteli. Nicaraguan and Jalapa and Esteli. Okay, good. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, there's a lot of Jalapa, a lot of Nicaraguan. And, hey, there's some Esteli thrown in for good measure. Yep. So. Uh, it only comes in one size, a 6x54 Toro. It's mm-hmm. box pressed. Have I had a box pressed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had that dark Corojo in the big fucker, which I don't like it in the big size as much as I do the smaller size. Now, I've already cut. Oh, it's got a double band. It's like debanded, and then it's got another band. It smells really mild for a Hoya de Nicaragua. Interesting. It's got a real kind of sweet, mild tobacco scent. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's a pretty pretty light-colored wrapper. It's not real, it's not, you know, real dark. I wouldn't say it looks Connecticut, but it definitely looks lighter than your normal. It's definitely lighter than the dark Corojo, that's for sure. Probably in line with the Antonio. Subtle or, or the, Yeah. yeah. Antonio's not that dark either, so. He's already given it a cut. I'm going to go ahead and give mine a cut. Cold okay. draw has a little bit as well. Let's let you, cut. Let you try it before I say anything. Yeah, I got a little gravel. Uh, but it's a little sweetness there on the lips. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely um, milder on the cold draw than your standard poison Nicaragua. But I'm getting a... That wrapper is just... I wonder if that's just the, the cap. The cap came off. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my cold draw. I'm gonna fire it up with our royal gold, but all of my royal gold logos wearing off. Royal gold. Thank you, royal gold, for the Lycar. Those like Lycars. <laughs> the Lycars. <laughs> the Zycar lighters. Yeah. So, the Lycar Zycars. Z- as you can Ziders. see, the flame is a good portion away from the cigar. I'm not scorching the cigar. I'm just lightly toasting the cigar. It takes a little bit longer. One of the things I love about this particular lighter is you can see pinpoint accuracy as you're lighting, so you can light the center of the cigar and work your way out. Yep. Great way to light it. Give it a little blow. That sounded bad. But you're used to that. Shut up. Take weed. Look, I got a little void in this. So there's a little hole in my... Yeah, there's one in mine, too. Okay. That's just the way they wrap. It's probably for the draw purposes. Mmm. Mmm, the room note. It's nice on it. Boy, it's got a a lot of smoke. Hmm. This is tasty so far. Yeah. It's got a light spice. Mm Mm-hmm. Not a lot of spice, but very pleasing to the palate. Kind of just... Kind of a baker's spice a little bit. Slowly warming you into the cigar. It's not hitting you in the face like a dark Rojo or an Antonio, so it is definitely a... Milder smoke. Today we are pairing mm-hmm. with the uh, Tomatin 12 year Highland Single Malt Scotch. So, yeah, and this is um, matured over 12 years and finished in Spanish sherry cask. Oh, cool. 
This is an inexpensive single malt um, or single, yeah, an inexpensive single malt scotch. Um, you can get it for about 23 25 It's not bucks bad for a 12-year-old scotch. Yeah. And, and it uh, tastes good. It's uh, It's got a hint. It's a hint more sweeter, more sweet than most scotches. No, I think that's the sherry cask. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get more of the sweetness with the sherry cask than the bourbon cask. I think it's going to pair nicely, though, because it's, yeah. um, yeah. it's got a little sweetness to it. It's got almost like a little floral mm -hmm. on the nose. That decent peaks, too. For a budget single malt uh, scotch, They're... that's becoming one of my go-tos. And if they want to sponsor us and send us some, we'll make it the official scotch of the show. Yes, sir. They're more than welcome to do that. We have a treat today, Brandon. We do. What's that? We have a special guest. Oh, yeah? His name's Billy Pond, Bloody Bill. That's of, a weird uh, name. Yeah, he's a, a high school friend of mine, and he is in the movie business, and he has a movie coming out in May. And uh, we're going to be interviewing him in the last segment. That's cool. Yeah. Good dude. What's, um, what school with him? High school, you said? Yeah, high school. Okay. Mesquite High School. And I was trying to remember, and if I think about it, I'll ask him. Uh, I think we went to the same middle school, but I don't think we knew each other in middle school. But I do wow. think we went to the same middle school. So he was your, your horror buddy? You got to talk about horror movies? Yeah, we talked about horror movies all the time. That's cool. And, uh, and, uh, we want, we'll try to focus on the movie and everything, but uh, he was a hell of a kicker Oh yeah. in high school, you know, a football kicker, mm -hmm. and he kicked straight on. He did one of the soccer-style sideways stuff, so if we get a chance, I'll talk to him about his... his uh, that's his card. That's his card. Yep. I know that dude. Yep. He's got a card. He's fancy. So his name is uh, Billy Bloody Bill Pond, yep. and he's with Bloody Bill Productions, mm -hmm. and they have a movie that we saw that we're going to be reviewing on the Creature Patrons today called right. Doll Boy. Doll Boy, which is the prequel to the... And it's a short yeah. to the movie that's coming out, which is called Circus of the Dead. Yep. And it's a full-length feature. Sweet. Making the full-length features. Yes. Which is what we want to do. We will. Maybe interviewing him will inspire us. You never know. You never know. Hmm. Yeah, that's tasty. It is. So is the cigar. And I've got, man, I have, this is the most razor-sharp burn I've had in a long time. Look at that. Yeah, that's a nice burn. This cigar is a little pricey mm -hmm. for the Hoyas and Nicaraguas. Typically, when you think of Hoyas and Nicaraguas, you think they're they're more along the lines of a, you know, inexpensive. They're in the six cigar. to eight fifty range usually. Yeah. yeah, and this one is uh, is up there. Thirteen fifty, I think. Yep. Yeah. But it is, you know, it's a it's limited cigar. edition and limited edition special. Cigar. When they're gone, they're gone. True story. Now I wonder, did Jose Block have anything to do with the, this blending? Don't he, know. he would have been around when they yeah. blended this. Or is this just a Cuenca thing, or what? I don't know. No idea. I know that uh, Cuenca has been, uh, you know, basically popping around with mm -hmm. the cigar and um, releasing it at stores and doing events and stuff. So I'm thinking it might be his baby. But also, you know, Jose's not there anymore, so he can't be around. <laughs> go around hawking the cigar. Exactly. So. Or Twitter friends with him. I'll uh, tweet him and ask him sometime. Yep. But uh, yeah, so far it's definitely. Um, on the mild side. Um, Although that retro hail has some strength to it. I'd say stronger than the Celebration, but not as strong as the Antonio or the Dark Rojo. Dark Rojo. Yeah, it's not to say that it doesn't have flavor. It does have mm -hmm. a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. It's like a sweet tobacco spice. And uh, the retro hail, let me try this here. You can talk while I'm doing that. No, I'm watching. <laughs> you're, you're making noise going... Yeah, I am. Yeah, it's not. There's, there's some spice. Yeah, there's some right spice. Here. It's but not I, a peppery spice again. What's more of a baker's spice? Yeah, or a... I retro held quite a bit of it, and it didn't really burn me out. So, very pleasant. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see if this uh, kicks in strength-wise as it progresses. I kind of have a feeling that it is. But yes, yeah, super razor sharp burn. I don't know if I can mm -hmm. see that, but and it's got a beautiful band. So this will be one of those bands or bands that you will end up saving because it is. It can, go in, can go in your cigar journal. Yep. True story. Oh, cool. It's got the, the one black band uh -huh. with all the little information on it, and then it's got the other gold band. If you leave that on there, it'd be like, Matsa died gold. Yeah, I addressed the two-band issue at the beginning. I know. Okay. <laughs> just I'm just making sure you're listening to the show. I, 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 <laughs> but I, was just, you know, I figured it was a band underneath another band, you know, like, but it was yeah. actually a band on top of it. Yeah. Which would mean there is a band underneath the band. <laughs> 
If there's a band on top of a band, then there's a band. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, well. So, razor sharp burn, nice white looking ash. Yeah, that's going to be Dave's take as well. We're big JDM fans, anyway. At the price range, it would definitely classify as a special smoke, something that you smoke on rare occasions, something that you know, you get a box and hold on to them and probably yeah. hit them probably hit pretty well. New Year's Eve's coming up. This would be a great cigar for mm-hmm. New Year's Eve. And pairing nicely with that scotch, actually. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. The scotch is a little peaty. I'm getting a little bit of peat on the back of the pot. Yeah. Not a lot. I'm getting most of that sherry. Yeah. Sweetness. It is tasty. I'm a fan of it. And, um, you know, I like, you know, a lot of the more expensive scotch, too. But being on a budget... Yeah, not a bad deal. Mm-hmm. Go with the blend and pay the same price. Why not get the same malt? Mm-hmm. And probably be a little happier. And enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Faux show. Mm-hmm. So what have you been up to this week? You smoking anything good? Mm-hmm. Yes, I had the uh, crap. I don't want to smoke that. That doesn't sound good at all. I've had, I did have a crap that. cigar too, but I won't mention that one. Because on this show, we don't really want to throw anyone under the bus because it, we all have individual palates and everything can be the same. True. Uh, I had the Ezra Zion Eminence. Okay. You've had that. Yes. I and you addressed it during the Ezra Zion event, mm-hmm. even though we weren't reviewing that, that cigar. cigar. But uh, that was a good cigar. And then I had uh, Pedro gave me one. Hmm. Hammer and Sickle, the Connecticut. Okay. That's the not icon? bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty high rated uh, actually. Which and I good. said, I think I mentioned that on a couple of weeks ago because he'd given me one and gave me another. It's a nice Connecticut. I have no idea what it goes for. I'm, it's total, I'm totally blind on that cigar. I just, but the two I've had, have, I've enjoyed, you yeah. know. Good burn, uh, consistent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I had a Maduro, and I'm, that's the one I'm trying to think of. What the heck was that Maduro? I don't know. What do you have? In a... I haven't smoked in a week. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have the CAO planet. That's it. That was it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was a Maduro, and I liked it. And... I, I don't remember. remember cigars. I got like a third of a way into one, and you know, it just didn't happen. So. Yeah. Oh, I had that 187 Maduro. Oh yeah. 187. Okay. Sorry. Me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it's a different Maduro than the uh, previous 187. It's a nice stick. And the 211 changed too, though, right? Yeah, it changed. Yes, yeah. And Todd was in, and they're releasing the Chupacabra. Mm-hmm. In both natural and Maduro, in a Salomon size, a double oh, torpedo. Cool. And apparently they're reasonably reasonably priced. They come in boxes of ten, uh, and they're nine bucks a stick. So I guess you can get a box for ninety bucks. Yeah. For and we know the Chupacabra Black's excellent, as is the natural. But we like the Black better or the Maduro. I, we called it the Black for so long, and then they didn't call it the Black. They wound up changing it, but we we still go back and refer to it as the Black. I'll have to change the name. I wish to, they'd have kept that. That was cool. I like, yeah, I like the black. Mm-hmm. You can always, you know, there's so many jokes that you can do. <laughs> always been all black. Once you go black, you never go back. All that stuff, you know, yeah. which is built into it. But I guess maybe that's why they changed the name. She's Who black knows? and has a rack. Wait, that's not a really old saying, is it? Didn't I just make that up? You may have just made that up. <laughs> it does apply to quite a few girls. It does. From the 70s, like um, Pamela. Pam Greer. Pam Greer, yeah. Yeah. She had a rack. You know, Wheezy was not attractive on the Jeffersons before. She had a huge... Yeah, I never wanted to see those. Though. No. you got to imagine, I mean, in the oh, show, they were like... They probably know, hit her knees. Rocket boots because of the bra back then, but they were probably, yeah. Yeah. And even Florence had a, had a nice size rack. Not as big as Wheezy. I just like saying Wheezy. Florence is the maid? The maid, right? yeah. 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 Yeah, you're going to a dark place, man. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, right. Yeah, those, those chicks were not attractive at all. No, they were, but we're talking about big racks. Yeah, we are talking about big racks, yeah. And Pam Greer, to me, was never really attractive, but she certainly was better than the two I mentioned. Yeah. Oh, I thought Pam Greer was kind of sexy just because she, the way she carried herself and you know, her persona. I like Paula Patton. Her sexy. Paula Patton's hot. She's yeah, gorgeous. She's hot. And she gets but, naked in that Denzel movie. Yeah. But she's married freaking Alan Thicke's kid. Moo. Yeah. <laughs> What's that stupid song? I can't stand that song. Bad. <laughs> Something with the B. Something it starts with a B. Line, uh, bl- uh, blurred lines. There blurred you know. lines. God, I hate yeah. that song. The video is great, though. Yeah. So you can turn it down. The video. You can turn it down and just look at the like, chicks walking around. Yeah. Kind of like our show. Wait. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> 
Mm. Yeah, me like you too, Tony Finn. I'm gonna get some more. Well, no, I'm gonna finish that first. I'm gonna get some more. I'm gonna finish that first. We'll figure now out. you know what I live through every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's him at home by himself. Hmm. On the can going. Just can't reach the bottom. <laughs> I don't drink on the can. <laughs> I go to the can because I drink. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right, so we're getting to the we're end. We're dudes. About, about the end of the first third. So we're gonna take Look, I've got a nice third. ash. Yeah, it's holding on it. really nice. And it's like, you know, you can't, yeah, you can't yeah, tap you have, hard. You don't have to, you have to tap hard to get that to come off. It's a very, very nice ash. You have to tap hard to get it to come out. Yeah. <laughs> tap that shit hard. All righty. So we're going to take a little break. We'll come this back. This is going to be a long second, smoke. Third, and the Esteban Carreras, Carreras Creature Feature. Feature. Doll Boy. Doll Boy. Car 55, this is Dispatch. We have a 211 in progress in your area. Please respond. Dispatch, this is Car 55. We are in the vicinity and on our way. Did you say this was a 211? Yes, 211 robbery in progress. Hmm, 211. That reminds me of that great cigar by Esteban Carreras, the 211. Man, I could go for one of those right now. Uh, okay, whatever. We have a farmer in the area whose goats are getting stolen. And this is where it gets weird, saying it's a chupacabra. A chupacabra? Are you kidding me? Man, that's another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. Whoa, hold on now. Let's keep our focus here. I mean, this guy called in a 187 on his prize-winning goat, Mary. 187? You're killing me here. Yet another great cigar by Esteban Carreras. I just think this guy sounds crazy. Yeah, you might just want to call in a 5150 and call it a day, you know what I mean? 5150, that's it. You call a paddy wagon, I'm turning around and going to the Calypso Cigar Shop in Richardson for an Esteban Carreras cigar. Hey, that sounds great. Can I join you? Absolutely. Esteban Carreras cigars. It'd be a crime not to smoke them. Are people listening to us live probably think we're insane. <laughs> I know, right? They probably thought it from just listening to the finished product, but yeah. we have removed all doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, so we're back for the second third of the Hoya de Nicaragua Cuatro Cinco mm-hmm. on this very special 45th episode of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast. We are five away from Fitty. Five away from Fitty. Fitty. Fitty Cent. Probably going to hit Fitty once We should get Fitty Cent on. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be happy to 50 come 50 on. Cent, yeah. I don't think Fitty Cent's coming on the show, man. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, especially after listening to our first segment about... Yeah. <laughs> yeah probably not. It's a little dark there. And it's like, oh, man, I don't think he's listening to this, so I think we're okay. I think we're good. Kanye might be listening. Con- yeah, Kanye. <laughs> get on his bad side and freaking ruin your life. He'll kill you. This guy's an asshat. I can't stand Kanye West. He's mm-hmm. just such a. He, he is the uh, the total representation of over privileged and entitled person. He's yeah. Just, you know, he's entitled to everything. And he says the stupidest things just to get. Oh God! Sad. After the when they did that Katrina fund, I felt so bad for Mike Myers, yeah. Michael Myers, because he's standing there and. Michael Myers is reading the teleprompter and saying what he's supposed to say. God, George W. Bush doesn't like black people. Michael Myers' eyes are like, like no. I have nothing to do with this. I didn't say anything. I mean, he should have just been like, I ate the baby. <laughs> just back off slowly. Uh, yeah, funny. I don't know. Yeah, it's bad news. All right. It's All right, so we get into the uh, Esteban Carreras creature feature. Yep. Today we've got a good one. It's actually a short, so it was pretty easy to watch, and it's called Doll Boy. Doll Boy. Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. All right, so today's Esteban Carreras uh, Creature Feature is Doll Boy. Boy. Directed by Billy Pond, Bloody Who's Bill Pond. His buddy. Yep, went to high school together and we're very good friends for a couple of years. Uh, thanks to Facebook, we've been able to reconnect. See, Facebook is good for something. Yeah, that's about all it's good for, but it's good for that. It's good for finding people that you want to find and finding people you don't really want to find. And you can't find some people that we're trying to find. Yeah, exactly. So, but, <laughs> uh, Yeah, Billy's a good dude, and we're going to be interviewing him in the next segment, so mm-hmm. stay tuned for that. That's going to be a treat. Uh, Circus of the Dead is a sequel that's coming out. After, so I know we're going to get to Dollboy, but I do want to promote this. Circus of the Dead is the sequel to Dollboy, and it's a full-length feature, and it's coming out. Uh, the premiere is in May, so we're a little early, but... Uh, Wanted to talk to him about it because I can't go to a horror site. You know, you, you go to the cigar forums, I go on the horror forums, and it seems like every day I'm getting, I'm hearing something about Circus of the Dead. So I contacted Billy and asked him if he would uh, come on come on the show. He said absolutely, let's book it. And uh, so for all you people listening on the horror forums, welcome. Uh, we have a different audience today. We've got a regular audience, but we're going to have the horror forum people too. So hi everybody. Hope you stick with the show for future reference and. Uh, 
Where are these four forms that you're talking about? Is well, like, um, friend Billy on Facebook, and he posts links to these places all the time. I can't remember. Uh, Vile, Vile they, Movies is they have, one. They have pictures of the whores? <laughs> like, are they Not whores. Um, There's Red Tube and stuff for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> X hamster. There's there was stuff for that. X hamster. Is that really a site? I, 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 on on the radio station, I listen to it. They mention those either of those sites at least twice an episode. X hamster. X hamster. Is that like Richard Gere's favorite? I site? don't know. I don't know the X hamster. X hamster. I got a current hamster. No. I'm not gonna go there. No. Sorry, gonna but go. anyway, so uh, Doll Boy, is written, directed, and produced by my buddy Billy Pond. And it is a short, about 26 minutes, but man, he packs a lot of action in that 26 minutes. It kind of has that grindhouse look. It does. Uh, it looks like it was shot on either 8mm or 16mm. It's got that grainy kind of look to it. And uh, very, it very much looks like it was natural lit. Like there's a lot of um, scenes that are really dark and get a lot of shadow and light. And it's very atmospheric in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course there was light and you can tell, you know, it's just very well lit as far as um, a low budget. Um, you know, made over the weekend type short. Right. Yeah, I'm curious about the time frame on the, on the how long he made it because it looks like they shot it over a weekend and because of the continuity. I mean, there was yeah. excellent continuity. There was never an instance of, wait a minute, that was over there, now it's over here. It's excellent continuity. So uh, while I'm sure it was shot over more than one weekend, it does have the continuity of just going one run after another, scene after scene. Uh, it's... Uh, I gotta stop you for a second. This is fucking good. Yeah, it is a good cigar. And yeah. look, I'm still holding my ash. Yeah, I've got my ash too. It's tasty. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not gonna say that it's complex yet because it's pretty much the same flavor profile as when it started, but not a bad thing. It's, it's a good flavor profile. Yeah. I'm happy with it. Like I kind of uh, want to ash it because I don't want to ash myself, but at the same time, I'm enjoying seeing how long. Yeah, it, I'm gonna see how long it lasts. Do this thing. So, as you were saying, sorry. Uh, now it's not for the faint of heart. Oh, you just yeah, dropped your ass. Drop uh, it's not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of violence. It's uh, it is. It does. It does follow the grindhouse genre in that it's very gritty and very dirty and very evil. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some moments in there that you're gonna be like, oh Ugh. shit, you know, because yeah. it's just it has that gritty feel of like a '70s horror flick. And it actually looks like a '70s horror flick. I mean, it has that same feel right. to it as something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something. Like but that. it doesn't have that hostile tor torture porn like feel no, to it at no, all the, the violence is very direct and very you know in your face and, and intended you know yeah. this this killer is just going to kill you period doesn't give a fuck you know yeah. i'm just going to kill you uh unlike a hostile where it's like ooh, we're going to toy with you and torture you and all that kind of stuff it's not yeah. like that at all uh but uh it definitely harkens back to uh, a day in, in the horror genre that was you know closer to like 70s late 70s when they were still you know, very visceral and very realistic and mm -hmm. seem like, you know, you don't know if these actors survived this thing. Like, you go like the... Yeah, House like if you found out it was a snuff or, film, yeah, you'd be, you know, would be surprised. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, Last House on the Left, Texas Chainsaw. Uh, and, and, you know, it's interesting you mentioned Last House on the Left because I was trying to think of a movie. Because, believe it or not, there's some funny dialogue in this movie. Uh, and, you know, Last House on the Left had a little bit of that. You know, Wes Craven was a little freaked out. He didn't want to totally go as dark as he knew. He knew it was going to go dark in so many places that he wanted to add levity in certain scenes. You know, those cops are almost like Keystone cops in yeah, Last yeah. House on the Left. Sure. And I don't know if that's what Billy's plan was, but uh, there's some funny dialogue. There's even a couple of scenes where we la kind of laughed at the death because it was just well written and well filmed and. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the uh, props. I thought the props were excellent. They really yeah. look old school. You know, when you, when you think about independent um, horror flicks, typically they're shot on video. Not a lot goes into the set design. Nine times out of ten, they look like they just found someone's house that had stuff and they shot it there, or they shot it on a set that looks like crap. And you know, they don't they don't put a lot of effort into the environment and the feel mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the movie. And this one is very atmospheric. I mean, it, yeah, it's dirty. It's dingy. The, the props all look like they've been there forever. It looks like you're in that world. Yeah. Either he was very smart and creative, and or he just got lucky and all that shit was already there. I don't yeah, know. I'll have to ask him. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, and that's that's a that's something you don't know, just get. You have to really work at that. Yeah. And to put that much effort into a short, you know, I don't know if he intended yeah. to make this, you know, as a, a you know something that would get him a, 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 a 
assuming that. Uh, I mean, usually when they do a short, they're doing it so they can get an actual feature film. Right. Um, you know, but that's it seems like he really put all of his, you know, effort into it to make it something special. Right. And it shows. I mean, it's a it's a very gritty, very realistic, um, edge of your seat. There's a lot of there is a lot of humor in it. There's a couple characters that are pretty funny in it. Um, even though you have One to of kind the... of suspend disbelief because, you know, really would you be saying all this funny, goofy stuff when you're about to die and you know, but but there's one character that I do find believable, even though he does fall into that category. He's talking about shit that you wouldn't be talking about when you're about to die. Yeah. But he's such a well-written character and such a ass he is. that you, uh, I don't, I don't fault him, uh, fault Billy at all for adding that part to the movie. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, well, that's the thing too. Is I mean, you're talking about a, a movie starts. Um, we'll give you a little bit. I don't want to spoil it all because you can actually watch this. I think online. Um, Maybe somewhere I know. think so. We'll, we'll, we'll ask him. We'll, we'll ask him. If we have the link. We'll put it up on the podcast. Or I'm sure his website sells the DVD. Yeah, you know. Know, but but uh, basically, it starts off. You know, there's a van. The van door. Opens, there's a, a creepy clown driving the van. The van door opens. There's a crap ton of people in this van. They're all taped up. They're all gagged, and they're bringing them one by one into this into this like rotted out building. And you know, that's a lot of characters. I mean, mm-hmm. there's probably what. There's probably like eight or nine, nine in the van. In the, van. Uh, the creepy clown and then Doll Boy yeah. shows up. And then there's that little kid that keeps running around. Yeah. You know? So you got a ton of people, and you know, in 30 minutes, you've got to establish characters, you've got to kill the characters, you've got to do a lot to, to get to the end and make you care about them. Mm-hmm. And out of the nine people, maybe four of them have a pretty good amount of character development, enough to where you actually care about them or don't care about them or right. want them to die. But that, you know, in 30 minutes, yeah. that's a feat. Yeah, it is. You know? Yeah. Um, usually when you see shorts like that, it's just like, you know, faceless, nameless characters you don't really care about. Mm-hmm. This girl takes her top off, she dies, that's it. You know, it's yeah. like there's not a whole lot going and on. As much as I love horror, I've never, or not never, that's dumb. I haven't seen a lot of horror shorts. I've seen a lot of shorts, but that just seems like uh, it's somewhat uncharted territory. You know, you might see a zombie short or something like that, but you don't see uh, an actual horror slasher movie. Well, I don't want to call it a slasher, although a lot of people get killed. Uh, more of a smasher. <laughs> it's more of a smasher. I don't want to ruin he anything. Should, he should call it that. <laughs> smasher. <laughs> it's a smasher genre. film, yeah. Smasher film. But yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to seek out some horror shorts because of this. This was very good. I doubt there are many of them are going to be as quality as this one is. And I'm not saying this just because we went to high school together. I haven't talked to the guy in 25 years. Yeah. So it's not like, uh, oh, I don't want to offend this guy that I knew 25 years ago. But uh, he is a good dude. We, we've communicated on Facebook a number of times. Uh, but that's not that doesn't have anything to do with my review of this. I really went into this skeptical mm-hmm. to a certain degree, but wound up actually being very well entertained. Hmm. Interesting. I, I, my ass fell while I was talking, but while I was talking, my cigar did not go out like normal. Are we having technical issues? Yeah, I'm getting texts saying that my audio is really low, so I need to like stand right here and talk and see if that maybe helps better. I can probably fix it in post, but we don't have the, the two tracks like we normally do. He says, you're really loud, and I'm really low. Mm. And seeing before, I was too low. I know, right? So, yeah. We're still live stuff out sucks. Whole live fucking thing. God damn. Bullshit live crap. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. But, yeah, I dug it. It was a cool uh, short. I, I was skeptical going into it, but I think you were even more skeptical going into it. I think you were kind of like, oh, man, it's Randy's buddy. I don't remember saying this. Blah, blah, blah. I saw it in your face. You didn't say it. Yeah. But uh, I could tell about four minutes into it, you were all commenting on it, like, oh, I like that. Oh, there's this one shot, and I won't tell you, but there's this one shot that we both looked at each other with that was cool. Yeah, it was way cool. Yeah. <laughs> that was really cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, little stuff like that where you can tell that they, they put the effort in to, um, to give it some style, mm-hmm. you know, and it definitely has style. Uh, it has that, that grindhouse feel, but it also has its own style. Because there's shots in there that you wouldn't see in a grindhouse movie. Most grindhouse movies are pretty much, you know, static cameras. And mm-hmm. There's a running camera that looks like crap, and, mm-hmm. you know, they, they don't have uh, finesse, per se. Mm-hmm. And this this definitely has uh, some finesse to it. So, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a cool short. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the full-on feature, uh-huh. see what he does with it. There was actually a trailer at the beginning of the DVD that was for the full-on feature, so, you know, and it we'll has see. some of the same characters in it. And yeah, and the tagline for that trailer was this is the most violent film ever so yeah we'll see if they live up to that we have to see if he'll get us into the premiere that would be cool that would be awesome that would right. be awesome so what are you thinking this is smoking this is really slow smoking slow yeah it's got a lot of flavor i'm getting a little bit more pepper on the back part of my palate it is changing on me yeah um it went from kind of a just really kind of a spicy, mild tobacco flavor mm-hmm. to now there is a definitive 
earthiness mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And a little slight bit of nuttiness, but not a whole lot. It's there at the back of the palate. I'm getting a there. little bit more nut than earth, but I'm getting, I see which I can, I can agree with that. Yep. But uh, are you getting that on the back of your palate? Mm -hmm. Kind of tingle? Yeah. I'm getting some sort of tingle on the back of my palate. Yep. That's that's telling you you need more scotch. That's what that is. You were going to pour us some. And then you I didn't. poured me some. Yeah. You're still working on here. Work mm. is completed. <laughs> All righty then. I'll provide the booze next week. So I have Yay. something in mind. I have something in mind I want us to try. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. It's called uh, Mad Dog 2020. I uh, know. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I always get that. Boone's Farm Cherry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, what's the other one? <laughs> I don't know. Blind mar mar what marble. Hell? What's it called? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't. Yeah. Sparkle. It's like, it's like hot, red hot or something. Or I don't hot, know. Hot something's like cinnamon crap. Ugh. Mm. But. Uh, if you can find Doll Boy, we'll, we'll ask Billy where the, where you can find it. Uh, but if you can find it, watch it. Uh, make sure the kids are not in the room, because uh, I'm sure it would be disturbing to children. But uh, you know, we're adults. We smoke cigars. We drink booze. We cuss. So this is a movie that's up our alley. Yep. And we lack it a horror picks. Yep. Good job, Billy. Very good job, Billy. Yeah. I'm looking forward to talking to him about it. Yeah. Oh, we fun. That's way cool. I have no idea time-wise where we are. Did this end the Esteban Carreras Creature this Feature? This does end today's Esteban Carreras Creature Feature. Esteban Carreras Cigars. Super premium cigars at a great price. They're scary good. All right, everybody. We're back for the third segment of today's review of the Hoya de Nicaragua Cuatro Cinco. And actually, right now, to go along with today's Creature Feature, we have the director of today's Creature Feature. Writer and producer. Writer and producer also. Billy Bloody Bill Pawn of Bloody Bill Productions and BloodyBill.com. How are you doing today, Billy? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Doing Ooh, well. Doing very, well. Very shaken up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just watched Doll Boy. Yeah. Well, y'all y'all make it sound uh, professional when you say uh, producer and writer and all that. That was just, Doll Boy is actually something we just did on the weekends for fun. It, it, it yeah, during the summer. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, it turned out awesome, man. I mean, I wanna, yeah, we have, you know, you'll have to hear the review once this goes live, because uh, we, we gave it a review. A uh, little background on Billy. Billy and I are high school uh, friends from back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, you and I hung out a lot our freshman and sophomore years, but then it seemed like we kind of went in different directions. I was probably, uh, I don't know what happened. You know, it's funny on that is a, uh, I run into people sometimes and say we went to school together and stuff, and it's hard to remember. And I don't know if I like had like a frontal lobe damage or something since then, but it's like my memory is like shot. It seems like, but right. I do remember that. But why we didn't hang out later on, I have no clue. I don't I'm know. Telling. But to it's, believe it or not, it's, it's because he's an asshole. Yes, I am an asshole. Oh, okay. That's what <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably is the truth. Uh, but uh, I do remember because you know I'm I'm getting old too. I can't remember a lot of things, and I drink a lot. But uh, <laughs> I do remember at lunchtime we would sit and talk horror movies. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was big back then because the mom Paul video stores. Yeah, and and uh, it was you know the '80s heyday of the slasher with Friday the Thirteenth and Nightmare on Elm Street and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So yeah, we did talk horror movies. So it's ironic that we're going to be talking to you about your own horror movie. Well, you know, I always wanted to do that even back then. Um, I was into haunted houses back then, and I did all the mm -hmm. local haunted houses back then. Like I did some stuff with the JCs and the police explorers, everything I could do in the ski. Um, and then I ended up doing some really big ones for uh, Samuel Farm for a while. Oh, okay. really? Really? And, uh, I didn't know that. Okay. My love for you know the haunted houses, I always figured if I had a good, successful haunted house, it would afford me to uh, be able to uh, you know finance and make independent horror movies was my goal. Well, and you've succeeded. Brandon has a haunted house background as well, don't you? Yep, I've worked a couple of haunted houses in my time, and it is a blast. It is a blast. But, you know, somewhere along the line, I don't know if it's for Brandon or not yet, it kind of turned into a business. It, and, uh, yeah. you know, I remember talking to Lance Pope out of Haunted Bird and Manor, you know, before he passed away and all that kind of stuff. And that's what he was saying, too. There's a, a part in the career, you just, if you work it so hard and stuff like that, eventually it turns into a business, and it just, it's not, you don't have that same kind of childlike enthusiasm like, you know, you once did or something. So, I still like it a lot, too, and I just do it, you know, because it's kind of a tradition here, but I don't worry about the money it makes or nothing like that anymore. You're just following your passion. 
Yes. Yeah, my passion is horror for sure. That's great. Yeah, that's a great passion to have because they make a crap ton of money nowadays. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know what's funny, though, is uh, people laugh at me when I say this, you guys. Y'all probably going to roll your eyes now, um, but uh, I don't do it for the money. I really don't. I just want to, uh, you know, I want to entertain people because I'm not as entertained because some of the stuff out there is not very good. You know, even the Hollywood stuff's not very good. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. It's very, it's very, um, it's like they went through a phase of, of pacification where they just kind of rendered down hard to where it wasn't really scary anymore. And you see guys like, um, you know, uh, I don't I hate to say it because I don't like his movies per se. I like a couple of his movies, but at the same time, I don't think he's that great of a storyteller. But Rob Zombie has kind of yeah, brought agreed, agreed. Come, he's brought some of that grittiness back that was, you know, in the '70s, but kind of lacking in the late '80s, early '90s. And um, you know, it's it's nice to see that that brutality and that uneasiness come back to horror films that was gone for so long. And, you know, I, I like him, and I like his uh, stuff, but, I mean, I can see the flaws in what he does. I mean, to me personally, um, it's like he he pulls too much from his life or the way he sees things, you know, yeah. like the teen's room are decorated into something that he would have decorated or he would, you know, or they're wearing the kind of clothes he would wear and kind of stuff like that is. Yeah. I try to see it from, you know, I don't like care too much for country music, but it's in the movies. Yeah, you know, it's right. like you know, it's it should kind of be everything. It shouldn't be just something in your world. I want to I want to use the real world, not some kind of made up fantasy world. Exactly, and that, we mentioned that too when we reviewed um, Halloween the original. We talked about zombies, and one of the things that bugged me about zombies' rendition of Halloween was that why do all the characters have to look like Rob Zombie? Like they had Malcolm McDowell with like stringy, greasy hair, and I'm like, what? He's supposed to be a doctor. What the hell is that? You yeah. know, just like. It was the white trash element added to it, and he just took the fear right out of Mike Myers by giving you that backstory where you're supposed to care about him. It's like, eh, you know, I liked it better when he was just a nameless, a nameless, faceless, evil kid from the suburbs. You don't know why he's evil, and it was scary because he was from the suburbs. And, you know, making him have an abusive father and take all this crap and killing animals just kind of really took the teeth out of the character to me. And I, I agree with you 110, uh, percent but I've gotten into lots of arguments about that because other people kind of like that backstory. But if you like, even on Doll Boy, they say is Doll Boy. Um, if it was an hour and a half, I'd just trim the fat out, and you got the best 26 minutes of it. If it was, you know, because that's basically what you know a typical movie is. Is is I just don't like backstories. You know, I like it to leave it to your imagination. It's scarier probably than anything yeah. I could come up with if you had to put your own backstory to it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's what made movies like Texas Chainsaw Massacre so effective. Is these people were messed up. You don't need to know why they're messed up. They're just messed up. Right. And you're in oh, the moment. Oh, they had a bad childhood. Oh, I'm so surprised. Yeah. And, yeah. You're in, <laughs> and you're in the moment, and you're scared. You don't know why. And that's, right. And that mystery is what made it scary. And that's what I loved about about Doll Boy is just these guys are fucked up and you don't know why and you know very effective filmmaking dude I mean the the, the eeriness and the level of just ick was just all over it and you felt you know, uneasy watching it and having the kid in there was like ah oh, that killed me because I I'm a father and you know seeing a kid crying his mom get hit in the head was like ah oh, geez you know just rough well you know what's funny about that scene was uh the 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 kid was uh, the co-writer of the movie Lee Ankrum's uh, daughter. And uh, his wife, uh, or ex-wife now, was there also. But to see everybody sitting on the outside of that van, watching when that was happening, covering their mouth, not to say anything. Because I knew once we put that kid in there, she's going to freak. Right. So we had, you know, we had to shoot it. We kept the camera rolling. We shot it from the outside. I threw the camera guy in with the kid, and then we shot it again from that angle. And that's all we had on that whatsoever. Yeah. Hey, Billy, did you, did you go to film school, or did you just, just this is just a passion that you've had, and you just... Like me, you've watched so many movies, you just have an idea how to make them. Yeah, you know, if, if you know, I mean, I would have liked to gone to film school when I was younger, but you know, by the time you know I got into this, uh, you know, I went, to, I, went, I took a job at Samuel Farm when I still lived, you know, in Mesquite and stuff, and it was a pretty good city job. But uh, they sent me to uh, Dallas. I don't even know what it's called this anymore. Dallas Cable Access. It used to be like Dallas Public Television or something. Yeah. Or other. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, do the editing there, and, you know, they teach you how to shoot on cameras and all this kind of stuff. Everything was tape back then, you know. Right. And uh, just now barely get into the computers. And then I come down here to visit my dad in Odessa, and they had a uh, job at a TV station for a uh, photojournalist. And I went and applied, and I didn't have any much experience, but they liked me so much. They said, hey, we'll give you an entry-level job. So I quit the good job for the city of Dallas and, you know, took a part-time job down here just to get my foot in the door. Right. So I basically cut my chops and news, you know, shooting news and directing news, but then uh, after five years of doing that, I jumped over to creative services, and now I run the creative service department here for like the past 
I guess about probably about the past eight or nine years, um, just basically doing local crappy you know commercials every day. Okay, so you're you're following the the path of like say George Romero. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. whereas he, you know, he falls like some of his newer movies aren't as good as the old ones. Oh, you yeah. kind of kind of ask yourself, it's like you know I love Van Halen and all those guys, but you always say how come people can't recreate something? You know, it's like. It's kind of tough, but maybe I can buck that trend somehow, someday, you know, if I'm in it long enough. But, uh, you know, hopefully I don't ever get soft and make bad stuff. So. Yeah, right. I agree. Uh, so, you, was it self-financed, Dollboy? Um, Dollboy was self-financed. I think we probably, I mean, I spent a lot on Dollboy as far as promoting, as far as, like, you know, getting nice posters printed out mm -hmm. and coloring books and, you know, <laughs> oh, doing nice yeah. DVDs and stuff <laughs> like that. But actually making the movie... I bought like a steady cam rig that might have cost me twelve hundred bucks, but other than that, I mean, we might have spent two grand total, and that was for like buying burritos or uh, barbecue sandwiches for right. people. And we shot it over uh, like the summer on just the weekends, so we could get in there on uh, Saturday mornings, and Saturday nights, and Sunday during the day. And that's all we did on that. And it probably took about I would probably say about eight weekends to shoot. Wow! And I don't this. Let me explain my question after I ask it, but or my okay. statement after I say it. Uh, I find that hard to believe because of the continuity. It really felt like you shot it over just one weekend, although quality-wise, certainly not. But the continuity of the story and the flow of the action and everything, I would not have been surprised if you said you filmed that over one weekend. Yeah. Okay. So kudos to you in that in that regard. Well, you know, it ran it ran a lot longer because. Uh... There, the building we shot in was an old, uh, you remember Gibson's? Gibson's yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stuff. I remember the one and, in the uh, skeet. You remember the one in like the skeet? They had a ton of holes in the roof. And it rained like during the week. And when we opened the door, it was like the shining at the elevator. Like, you know, oh, hundreds of gallons of water come pouring out. Oh, no. And uh, so it like moved all the props and messed that up. So we got, we'd get knocked out. We couldn't, we couldn't, we had like extension cords and generators running. So we couldn't use anything electrical, so we even got knocked off a weekend or two. So there might have been a month where we didn't even film for a month. Wow. Dang. Oh, so, yeah. And we were using the TV's equipment back then, was which was uh, mini DV tapes and just the, the camera I used for television. Um, but my goal was, is that was a test, you guys, is, is I didn't even have any, you know, I didn't even want to put that movie out to anybody. And I had a couple of friends here that said, hey, why don't you, you know, there to film festival, I go, this is just like screwing around, you guys. Nobody's going to take this, you know. Well, we got in a ton of film festivals since then. Um, but it was just a test to see how good things would be before I attempted to make, you know, a bigger one, which that's what I'm doing now is I'm doing Circus of the Dead. Um, it is basically a sequel to Dollboy. Dollboy is the character from that world. Right. Now, you guys probably seen the uh, trailer for Circus of the Dead. Yes. That yes. was for a groundhouse contest in 2007, and the only thing that's the same in that trailer is that is that one big clown noodle dome, which you saw in Dollboy. Awesome. The movie's nothing like that, and we had, uh, you know, we hired, you know, really good actors, you know, and stuff, like Bill O'Burst Jr., Paris Randall, Chanel Ryan, and, uh, you know, flew them in, and we made a real movie. We shot over uh, August and September, and that's what I'm doing up here now, is editing, and you guys ain't going to believe that. I would basically go on record and say, you guys ain't seen shit yet. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. Awesome. Well, the tagline on the trailer that we saw said uh, that it's the most violent movie ever. So that's uh, that's saying something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some, uh, you, you will see, see in this new one, uh, not to give away too much, you will see Clown Dick. Oh, good. <laughs> Just what I've always wanted to see. Is it is it painted? <laughs> it, it is painted with the grease makeup. Yeah. All right. Now, when... but, but I didn't do the painting. I made somebody else do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so okay. we heard an interview with um, was it Bill Oberst Jr. Yeah. yeah, and he was talking about the movie on uh, I forget the site. What was the name of the site? There was some, the something he posted on Facebook the other day, Billy, and I and I forwarded it to Brandon so he could. Uh, but it was that interview with Bill Oberst. About the podcast with Bruce and Herzog. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. About a thirty-minute interview. It's great, great if you can find that online. Yeah. Uh, watch it or listen and to he it. He did mention that it is extremely violent, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm I like the grit back in horror. I like that it's, you know, uncomfortable to watch a movie, but it's supposed to be, so that's well, it. See, now, Bill, he's, uh, now, see, is, uh, uh, I can't say enough nice things about Bill. You know, I consider him a brother, but he's a professional guy. He's professional. Even when he does the interviews, he's professional. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's not going to over embellish anything or, you know, because he does a lot of movies, you know, and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, it's, I told him, I sit and told him, as I said, he goes, you know, he goes, well, this would be good if we get distribution. I go, Bill, we're going to get distribution. I said, I want immortality. 
So, <laughs> this, this movie is going to, I hope it changes a lot of things. I basically want it to be as relevant as the original Chainsaw. Awesome, well. awesome. That's, That's great. A hell, of a, hell of a reach there, man, but I hope you make it. Um, it's uh, it's looking it's like... Good, I mean, you guys. You guys are really going to like it. It's, it's basically, it's Dollboy with a lot of you know, good dialogue with it. You know, you still get the same thing like Dollboy. You get to meet, you get to see Dollboy again. Mm -hmm. okay. You get to see his uh, little brother Peppy the Mime, and there <laughs> he carries a a dragster chainsaw. Nice. Um, you know, then you get all you get to meet the other clowns that you haven't met yet. You get to meet, uh, you know, Bill Ober's Papa Corn, Rusty Edwards is uh, Mr. Blister, uh, <laughs> Mike Williams is Jumbo, and of course. Uh, Ryan Clapp is noodled on the clown, which you saw in Dollboy. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine, and he's been in everything I've ever done. He's kind of like a good luck charm. Okay, cool. Very cool. So, uh, Circus of the Dead comes out in May, is that correct? I think for sure. I guarantee we know it's going to be playing. The world premiere right now is going to be probably Friday, May 2nd, in Dallas at the Texas Frightmare Weekend. Do we get uh, an invite to this? Premier? Yeah, you guys, if you've never been to one of those horror conventions or something, you guys got to come. It's just the coolest thing. I mean, you could get this, you know, like, a, you know, Bill Mosley, right? Chop Top and uh, yes, yes. Self and Devil's Rejects, yeah, Odin, yeah. House of a Thousand Corpses and all that. Um, he was there. He'll hang out and talk to you. They're like the nicest people in the world. So, yeah, if you guys have never been to a horror convention, you you got to go check that out. you got to. Yeah, we'd love to. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, The movie that we watched was Doll Boy. The sequel is... Circus of the Dead, uh -huh. and you guys have got to see it. Talking to our listeners now, Billy, <laughs> I should have addressed that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if our listeners want to buy a copy of Dollboy, is it available? Is it on your website? How can you um, get a copy of this? You know what? Is, as I do sell it, it's usually available on my website, but since I've been so busy with this, it's like, because I get hit with like, you know, maybe about, you know, five or ten copies a week, yeah. and it's just been kind of tough, because I've honestly been living in the edit bay for, you know, probably 15 hours, 16 hours a day, and I, you know, I work until about five or six in the morning. Um, so I just kind of took it off the store temporarily to kind of get my, as soon as I get this deadline done, it'll be available in January, let's okay. just say. And cool. this episode will air just about the end of December, so, so yeah. just in time. Yeah, I just got to get this, I'm trying to make this hardcore deadline of a rough cut for uh, something really special, um, and, uh, and that, that deadline for me is the 20th, so I got like nine days left, and, and I got like a, a, probably about a quarter of a movie to go still. Very cool. Oh. Well, I gotta Funny. tell you, Doll, you know, Doll Boy was was way cool. We enjoyed it a lot, and um, there were some actually laugh out loud moments. We actually laughed out loud. Yeah, at a couple I dug of the months. dialogue. I, you know, one character that I hate to kind of want to spoil it, but he was such an ass, <laughs> he was such a douche. Yeah, that guy was a dick. Is, is he gonna make an appearance in uh, Circus of the Dead? He, he picks up right where that one left off. Oh, oh <laughs> awesome! That is great because I hate it when a movie ends and you don't know how it ends. And then they have a sequel, and they never even address how that original movie ended. I hate that. So yeah. I love that you're picking up, uh, kind of like Halloween 2, you're picking up right where it left off. Well, you know, uh, it's, you will find out what happens to Hillman and his watch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the watch scene was great. Yeah. That was great. Oh, one thing I want to ask you real quick, we'll let you go, so we appreciate your time. Uh, but uh, the props, I mean, I've commented on the props and that thing, like the old canned goods and... Things like that. Were these things left over from the old Gibsons, or where did you find these uh, things? No, uh, uh, we, we save a lot of that. Uh, Lee Ancrum's like a master. He went to school with us, too, at Mesquite. I think he graduated uh, in 89, okay. I believe. That makes 89 sense. 89 or 90. Um, but we've kind of been doing Haunted Houses together forever. He co-wrote that, co-wrote Circus of the Dead with me. But uh, he's a genius when it comes to set design and... You know, stuff like that. I mean, the dude's just weird. I mean, he goes anywhere from estate sales to trash cans to, you know, garage sales. And he just starts finding things. Now, as far as those canned goods, a lot of those we made up uh, fake labels for. Oh, okay. stuff, oh, okay. I'm a sucker for detail. And yeah. like I said, even when you see Circus, man, you're going to see some really cool stuff in that one. We, we uh, transformed a whole uh, um, beer store. Oh, you know, we I made up all my own beer labels, and we, we oh, covered wow. bottles and all kinds of stuff and made banners, giant banners and signs, and as if we were, uh, you know, had our own, you know, company of beer and That's liquor awesome. and stuff. Very Tarantino-like with the big kahuna burger and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I threw, like, a reference to my haunted house. Like, I got a DEF CON and DEF CON Light. It's kind of like a zombie-themed beer. And then I, <laughs> I throw a, I throw a uh, uh, homage to Tarantino as there's a Jay Winfield malt liquor. Okay. All right. <laughs> And then there's a uh, uh, Vincent, or no, it's a Vega Amsterdam Red Light. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. awesome. That is great. And I throw some stuff to Jimi Hendrix in there awesome. too. So uh, we do like a Voodoo brand beer. Nice. So, 
That is great. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and I want everyone to keep an eye out for Circus of the Dead. If you can find All Boy, watch it. And uh, Billy, it's been Online, great. Online for free too. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Where can you find uh, that? Uh, if they just if they go find uh, Dogboy on Facebook, I think it's just uh, Facebook slash Dogboy Movie. Um, somewhere I posted a link on there. If they just write me on there too, I'll make sure I send them the link or forward them the link, and you can watch it on your internet. Yeah, everybody do that. Absolutely, everybody we'll, do that. We'll put the link on the review when we put it up, so people. Can oh, see. perfect. One yeah. one final question. Yes. How do I get a part in one of your movies? <laughs> <laughs> you got to come get on the casting couch with the other girls. Oh, I, yeah. that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'd be great with that. You mean you mean that short film that of mine you didn't think that was a good enough audition? <laughs> uh, hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I tell people when they ask me that, for real, though, it depends. If, if somebody's weird enough looking or got some kind of weird thing, I always, no matter what they are, I make sure I get them out because I like, I like interesting people in my movie. Well, you know what uh, I mean? We fit that bill, that's yeah. for sure. But uh, Billy, it's been great talking to you, and uh, let's not let's not wait another twenty something years to talk next time. I know. Well, I expect you guys. I should do something out of the Texas Frightmare. When we'll is do that? Some, take some video and there stuff you. out there and stuff like that. We'll make sure you guys get into the premiere and all that kind of stuff. Heck Thank yeah. you. That'd be great. We'll keep in touch, man. We'll keep in touch, Billy. I'm wishing you all success. That's, all right. Have a great night. Take you care, too. Billy. Happy yeah. holidays, bud. Happy holidays. Bye bye. Bye bye. So that was Billy Pond from. Bloody Bill. Bloody Bill Productions giving us the skinny on Circus of the Dead. Yeah, and uh, Dollboy. So, yeah, yeah, go on Facebook and uh, find Dollboy. It's an entertaining movie to watch. And that was kind of cool to talk to a guy that we were real good friends for a long time. Haven't talked to him since 87, probably. Yeah. And uh, here he is uh, living the dream, man. Yeah. That's that awesome. should be motivation for us right there, buddy. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. And we get to go uh, to the premiere. I didn't ask him about the way it looked. Damn it. Oh, well. Well, he said he shot it on TV. Too. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. I must have serious post-production to make it look like film. Yeah. It actually looked like 16 millimeter, 8 millimeter. Well, Facebook friend him and ask him uh, yeah. on I'll Facebook. Him. Okay. All right. That was cool. Well, that's awesome, yeah. So no shout-outs today because we did all of them last, last time. And we're doing a couple shows back-to-back because we're trying to take care of the holidays for you guys. Make sure you have something to watch. Um, so as always, check us out on Podomatic, Spreaker, iTunes, um, YouTube, Twitter, all those social media places that you can yeah. find the best stuff. iHeart. Did us. you say iHeart? Yeah. Yep, iHeart. You want to part us? Bing. Put us on the playlist. Yep, put us on the playlist. Stitcher. Also, we've been on the top 100 for uh, games and hobbies for a while, so that's cool. So keep adding us on the Stitcher. And also, Stitcher has a – they're doing their Stitcher Awards. Yes, they are. And they want nominations. Nominate so nominate guys. us. And if you do, you definitely get shout-outs. Yes, you will. <laughs> that's for sure. And but, uh, from the stack. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he said yes. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. No, to what he said then. And uh, <laughs> all righty. Well, uh, that was cool. That was way cool. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna finish up. Uh, we're gonna take a little break, and then we're gonna come back and uh, get finish into the Quattro Cinco and give you an update on the last third. There you go. That was to Google, Google Plus, because you're a pain in the ass. We're gonna switch to Yahoo Plus, <laughs> and if they don't have one, we're gonna make them. What was that? What was that one that was like a, was like Yahoo, but it was a Butler or something? What was that? Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. We're gonna switch to Ask Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves. Ask just Jeeves. Just the ghetto version of it. Yeah. Plus. <laughs> you know, I liked that site when it first came out. You know what my favorite search engine was ever? What? Excite. I liked Excite. It was quick and. And I think Yahoo stole their formula because it looks like Yahoo. Yeah. It does now. But uh, I like that one. Anyway, we're back. All right. So that was a great interview we had there with uh, Bill Pond from Billy uh, Pond, Bloody Bill. Bloody Bill of uh, Bloody Bill Productions, right? Yep. And uh, it's Bloody Bill 666 at, at Bloody Bill 666 on Twitter. So give, give him a follow. That's evil. He is evil. Yeah. See, I'm a superstition. I can't write 666 altogether. Yeah. So when I was writing down the shout outs, I wrote bloody B I L six six L and then I final <laughs> six. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing it. Dude, I have a six 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 story. Okay. I swear to God. Okay, I come home from work one day and there was this guy that lived in these townhomes that we lived in. And I saw him leaning on a car and his eyes looked like raccoon eyes and his wrist was all matted and gross and and uh, my wife's hugging him and I'm like, What the fuck are you hugging this guy for? And she says, uh she says, Ronnie just got robbed. And I'm like, what happened? He said he came home from work, opened his door, and had his own gun stuck right under his nose Ooh. by some guy. The guy threw him in his bathtub, duct taped his eyes shut, 
and duct taped his hands together. Yikes. So he's blind. Yeah. Doesn't know if he's about to get shot with his own gun. The guy leaves, stole his car, stole a bunch of shit from his house. That's messed up, man. Okay, the 666 part comes in. He said, you know, I'm not a superstitious person, he says, but I was just at the grocery store, and my total purchases came to $6.66. And he said, the wait, the, the uh, cashier said, you want to buy something else? He says, why? She goes, most people, when it comes up to 666, won't, uh, they don't like that, so they'll buy something extra, but I stick a you know, pack of gum or something. And he goes, I'm not superstitious. Fuck that. Ten minutes later, he's got a gun under his nose. So, yeah, I'm not writing 666 together. And like at a gas station, if it gets to that point, yeah, pumping, man. What's funny is if the guy would be like, you ever dance the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously things are coincidence and all that kind of crap. But that was yeah. funny, or not funny. It was ironic that that happened to either, him. Either God or the devil has a sense of humor. I think more likely the devil. <laughs> but you got to know God's out there going, hey, check this out. I'm going to fuck with this guy. There's an old Jewish proverb that God, or man plans and God laughs. Yeah. And that's very true. It is very true, yeah. Yep. The Jews know a thing or two. Mm-hmm. And... Happy belated Hanukkah to our Jewish listeners. Yes, and uh, we're at the last third of the, and we didn't really address the Hoyt in Nicaragua Quattrocinco during the interview because he's not a cigar smoker and wanted to hit the. Uh, we wanted to touch the, the horn. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we're talking to like a guy who's making movies. We want to talk about that. So, but last third has kicked up. Mm-hmm. It is definitely kicked up a notch. It's um, I'd, I'd say call it, it high medium, like six. Yeah, six it's and like a half. high medium, and and the retro hill definitely has a lot of spice on it. Um, I, you know, it's a flavorful cigar. It is a very flavorful cigar, but I, I don't know that it's that complex. It it, it has I, changed. It has changed, and I think it's one that will do with a little age. If you happen to get a box, or if you have a box, smoke one now. Smoke one on a rare occasion. You know, especially like you know, we talked about um, New Year's or Christmas. You know, whatever, and then just hold on to it for a while and see what they become. Because I think that this blend is going to do something special in say six months. Yeah, but I wouldn't age it too much longer than that. I don't think you age just two years. You're gonna age whatever. Well, you're gonna age whatever. Yeah, you're gonna age all the the, any kind of power strength out of it is gonna go away. But, but you know, then maybe that's not what it's about. Maybe he aged. Maybe he meant it to be more of a journey, just in flavor. And that's very possible. I mean, we're talking about the genius of Oida Nicaragua. Exactly. Doctor Quink and maybe Jose Blanco. I want to know if Blanco was involved. So I'm gonna tweet him. Yeah, we're gonna need to ask him. Yeah. I'm gonna tweet him and ask him for sure. If he'll reply, because. He does that. Yeah, he's awesome that way. Mm-hmm. He is very awesome that way. It's definitely flavorful. It definitely has a lot of flavor. Um, it's not your average Hoya de Nicaragua. If you're expecting a pepper bomb or a flavor bomb like the Antonio or like the Dark Row, you're going to be surprised because it is something different. I would say it is stronger than the Celebration. Not by much, but I think it is a little stronger than the Celebration. Yeah. And I like the Celebration. I haven't had it in a long time, but I do like that cigar. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, you know, it is something different, and that's, you know, and that's fine because you know they they're putting out a lot of different lines, and uh, you want to cover kind of the bases of what's out there, and it's like what do we have, what do we not have? This is what they didn't have, so you know, yeah, it's something different. Look at that smoke. <laughs>